Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Wohler for Sunrise Functional Medicine. In this short video titled, Is Cerebral Folate Deficiency a Problem for Everyone with Autism? We're going to talk about cerebral folate deficiency and what that means for a child, teenager, or even adult um, who may have a deficiency of folate within the brain or nervous system. So here is our disclaimer. Understand that this information is for educational purposes only. So a number of years ago, there are, actually there's a number of papers that have come out. This particular one in molecular psychiatry came out in 2013 that was discussing this cerebral folate deficiency syndrome as part of neurodevelopmental conditions like autism, for example. Uh, and what they found is that a significant percentage of individuals with autism um, often have low folate levels within the brain and nervous system, and that the application of folate supplementation, specifically through something called folinic acid, which you can get as a supplement or from a prescription medication called leucovorin, can often have really beneficial influences. So the question is in the autism world is who needs therapy? Well, in kids with cerebral folate deficiency, that's actually been defined where they do a cerebral spinal fluid analysis, measuring cerebral spinal fluid levels of folate. These are kids that absolutely need to be on folate supplementation to get it replaced. Now, that level of testing is not typically occurring in autism, for example, where a child is undergoing cerebral spinal fluid analysis. Um, what we're tending to do is look at other tests that can be indicators of the potential for low folate. And I'll discuss what that means because folate essentially needs to be transferred into the brain and nervous system. So one of the things to keep in mind is that a lot of evidence points to the fact that signs and symptoms of cerebral folate deficiency, it's a spectrum of problems that can occur, may be manifesting in some individuals with autism, mostly children, um, and they might potentially benefit from folate supplementation through something like folinic acid. So irritability, restlessness, poor sleep, motor development problems, low muscle tone, balance issues, seizures most certainly are a strong indicator of this potentially happening. And then of course, signs of autism, particularly early onset autism, um, can be strongly linked to cerebral folate deficiencies. So again, it it's not always 100% confirmed through traditional testing. So cerebral folate deficiency to actually get an absolute confirmatory test is best done through cerebral spinal fluid analysis. However, that is not something that is typically done. And so there are other tests that can be indicators of potential problems. And the bottom line is this, is that the main problem with cerebral folate deficiency, whether it's in a classic situation or an, indiv an individual with autism, is that the transfer or the transport of folate is getting blocked or inhibited into the brain or nervous system. So it's actually an active transport process to get folate across the blood-brain barrier. Now, an interesting test profile is something that comes from a company called Intellex DNA. And this is a large panel of different types of genetic variants. This was just one example of a child with autism who had a genetic variant of their folate receptor. Now, the folate receptor 1, which you see on the image here, which is the FOLR1, is the primary folate transporting mechanism for drawing folate from the bloodstream into the brain. Now, in this particular individual, they had a genetic variant that would affect the function of that receptor. So that could not necessarily completely shut down the ability of drawing flow, folate into the brain, but it could slow it down or compromise it to some degree. Now, there are many different folate receptors throughout the body. So all of these involve different receptors that bind to the folate and then draw it into its respective organ. And what ends up happening is that the immune system can start forming antibodies 
that will interfere with the function of the folate transporting mechanism. So, and that could be a problem because what can end up happening is that a, an immune protein or the, the antibody, what's called, or the immunoglobulin can bind to that folate receptor and either block the ability of folate to bind completely or it can bind to the receptor, change its orientation so that folate has a difficult time binding. Either way, we're getting a reduced ability of the transporter to bring folate into the brain and nervous system. And so if we look at this image again, a little bit more expanded, so the FOL, um, LR1, the folate receptor 1, if we are going to have folate, so this oval shape F, that's, that's folate essentially, and folate wants to bind to that receptor. Once it binds to that receptor, that receptor can draw it across the blood-brain barrier and deposit it into the brain. But if there are antibodies that have been generated against the receptor, we can have what's called a blocking antibody, where essentially it blocks the ability of the receptor to bind to folate, or a binding receptor where that, that excuse me, a binding protein uh, antibody that can bind to the receptor. It doesn't necessarily bind the, the binding site, but it, it it attaches to another place on the receptor and kind of changes its orientation, that would disrupt folate binding as well and the ability of that receptor to draw folate into the brain and nervous system. So the folate receptor antibody test, which comes from a company, Iliad Neurosciences, can analyze for both the blocking and the binding antibodies against the primary folate receptor. So we can see in one case, we've got the blocking antibodies occurring, and then in the other scenario, we have the binding. Either way, the function of the receptor is altered, and the ability to draw folate into the brain and nervous system is compromised. And you can learn more about the folate receptor antibody test by actually going to Iliad Neuroscience website at iliadneuro.com. Now, what's been discovered over the years is that milk protein, particularly cow milk protein, can trigger an immune reaction where the immune system then starts adversely interacting with the folate receptor. So uh, this is you know, well established and it likely occurs with other milk too. So goat milk and perhaps other animal milk can be a contributing factor. It's well established that cow milk, which is the primary milk that the vast majority of people are drinking, so we're getting a immune cross-reactivity with cow milk-derived proteins, likely other milk proteins as well, against the folate receptor. So the way to figure this out is you have to do the testing. You have to do the FRAT test in order to confirm whether there is a positive blocking or binding antibody happening. Now, there are other issues that might compromise the function of the folate receptor. So inactive folic acid, essentially, which is found in many different supplements, may interfere in some individuals that might be problematic. Mitochondrial problems, what's interesting with regards to that discussion is that the folate receptor works through the energy by an, a mitochondrial chemical called ATP. So the mitochondria produce ATP, which is the cellular energy currency that then runs the function of many of these receptors. Perhaps other inflammatory disorders could be associated. Um, and sometimes when we get to a therapeutic standpoint, many individuals on, with autism or other special needs who have this issue can benefit from folinic acid, but sometimes that benefit is actually enhanced also with the use of methylcobalamin. And so there are a number of ways of approaching this, but typically folinic acid starting at 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram split dose twice daily, you know, and then adjusting that dose over time is often beneficial. It's, it's often beneficial with many individuals on the spectrum to start low, start slow, and then build up your dose over time. We're not in a huge rush. This is not something that's typically done just for a couple weeks. This is a therapy that is implemented for many, many months over time. And in some cases, uh, certain individuals may need it for 
a, a very long period of time, upwards of a year or more. So the maximal dose is typically 50 milligrams a day. You see here, folinic acid, this is a typical folinic acid which comes from New Beginnings Nutritionals, 800 micrograms, a typical supplement dose per capsule. And then there's the leucovorin option. The benefit to the leucovorin is it is folinic acid. It just comes at a higher dose. So you can get it in various dosages. This is just happens to be a, a picture of a 25 milligram dose. So the way that we're establishing the issue of potential cerebral folate deficiency with many of the um, individuals with autism is through FRAT testing. So looking either at binding or blocking. The intellect's information is interesting from a genetic standpoint because that also just shows us how genetic variants can influence the function of those receptors. We're not necessarily 100% confirming cerebral folate deficiency because that really needs to be established from a conventional medical standpoint by looking at cerebral spinal fluid levels of folate. But, you know, if you extrapolate whether we've got some genetic patterns, whether we've got a positive FRAT test, that the likelihood of reduced folate in the brain and nervous system is occurring when the genetics may be there, and certainly either when there's a blocking or binding antibody may be happening. So a lot of times just moving forward with a trial of the intervention can be extremely beneficial. So I'm always available for ongoing questions and dialogue through the Autism Recovery System website. This is a membership website for parents and caregivers of individuals with autism or other special needs conditions, you can go to autismrecoverysystem.com and then you have our email there as well. And then if you're interested more about our consulting practice, you can go to my sunrisecenter.com. There is our email, scmedicalcenter at gmail.com and then the phone number. So again, I am Dr. Kurt Wohler for Sunrise Functional Medicine. Thank you.